Vedic wisdom compares this world to a prison house. Although we believe ourselves to be free, we are bound by our self-conceptions, desires, and fears. We search for joy, but meet with struggle, and few know this better than those in jail. I have been in prison for 43 months, with 27 to go, and been in terrible fights, broke up with, and a plethora of troubling situations. There are guys who run to their room and hide because they never get mad, and it's very painful. And there's other guys, there's this thing people say, oh, nobody loves you. But when you really believe that, it's painful. So they run. According to the principle of karma, we have each created our current circumstances through our own previous actions. We are responsible and accountable for our own choices. Yet a great sage once said, mercy is above justice. It is noble to help a person to overcome their mistakes. A lot of the members that we're working with, they never expected they'd end up in jail. Um, anything can happen. A lot of us have been in bad situations and could have been one of us. Held away from the world, prisoners have a rare opportunity for sincere reflection, renewal and growth. The realizations, lessons, and meditations of loving sages transform the cell into an arena of personal, spiritual, and social growth. That's where I started on my spiritual path. That's why being incarcerated, how much importance is placed on meditation, yoga, and chanting the names of God, you know, and reading spiritual books. That's really key. The only thing you who you're going to change is yourself. So by doing the practice while you're incarcerated, that's the key to having a happier existence within. The philosophy is so amazing and so high. You, you can't get enough. It's impossible to be satiated with it, <laughs> which is the opposite of, of the material things. What your volunteers did was a beautiful thing. I thank you and encourage you to continue helping the incarcerated nation of people. We go in as a um, clergy, take like a spiritual advisor and have one-on-one -on -one visits and that's been really, really great. Three or four of us have done that and we've met about 20 inmates so far in our program and we were the first visit they had and it was very, very moving. And then we've had two Kirtan programs as well and that was um, the chanting, you know, bringing the chanting and we had a group in Oregon of 30, and 30 inmates came, and they were closed, eyes closed. They were you know, could see they're meditating and rocking and singing, and so a couple even cried. Hearing your volunteers sing out of the total charity of their hearts was in a way shocking to me. Suddenly I remembered that the whole world is not purely coldness and woe that the beauty of spirit that shone through during their visit continues to exist, despite me being separated from it. It's just, it's amazing to me. And it's enlivening and inspiring, and it just keeps you going, you know? <laughs> we have a really core team, everyone's really dedicated, and volunteering their personal time, and the reciprocation we're getting from the inmates, and the change we're seeing has been uh, extremely rewarding, extremely heart-touching. Mercy gives hope and nourishes one's higher ideal. And to quote that same sage, a man should be judged by his ideal. And what is the highest ideal? Love. We are deeply grateful for all the generous encouragement we've received so far. The noble chaplains and wardens have especially helped us in our work through direct facilitation of our program and also indirectly through their own like-minded projects. With your continued help, we will go on sharing these tools of spiritual healing. When you're at the top and you've got everything, it's one thing. But when you're at the bottom, that's when you ask life's greatest questions. In Florida, when you come to prison each time, you get a new letter. You start with a zero. The second time you come, you get an A, then you get a B, then you get a C. And you can look at someone's badge and tell, this guy's got an F letter. He's been to prison seven, eight times. 
So these people, at some point, they understand, if I stay where I'm at, I'm coming back again. I'll have a G and an H and an I. This gives them a chance to change. This is the thing that can actually keep them from coming back. 